Part 2. Verdant Wind. Guardian Moon. The Alliance Leader's Ambitions. Claiming the monastery at Garrig Mach as its home base, the Alliance Army joins forces with the Knights of Seros. Together, they begin to take up arms against the Adrestian Empire. Good work, Hilda. You didn't do much manual labor, but you managed to rope the knights into helping us restore the monastery. Thanks, Claude. But all I did was piggyback on your scheme. I saw your eyes telling me to make some magic happen. Thank you so much for your help with the restoration. Oh, please, it was nothing. We're just doing our part as former students. I'm told you even routed the bandits. That job should have fallen to us. I'm sorry for the trouble. Hey, don't think twice about it. We're all allies in the resistance against the Empire, right? The Church is at war with the Empire, but let's be realistic. Wouldn't it be better for the Alliance to eventually submit? The way I see it, the Emperor wants to take over all of Fodlan and destroy the existing order of the world. I can't see her allowing the Alliance to continue to exist. We're in this just as deeply as you are. Actually, we were hoping to use this place as a base. The Empire begs to be meddled with, and we're first in line. What? Why would you want to make your base here of all places? Garrick Mach is situated in the center of Fodlan, both geographically and spiritually. We want to secure this location while the Empire is still overlooking it. I see. The Empire doesn't see this place as important at the moment because it's far from the front lines. But if we simply decide that it's ours to occupy, that does nothing to inspire the hearts and minds of the people of Fodlan. Luckily, good old Teach has finally returned to us. If the professor Rhea entrusted with the sword of the creator fights at our side, well now, that's a just cause anyone could get behind. What's more, here we are, working alongside the legendary Knights of Saros. It smacks of divine providence, doesn't it? Can you feel it? I have heard what you have to say, Claude. And you, Professor? Where do you stand? Hmm. On our own, we lack sufficient military strength. But with the help of the Alliance... The Archbishop said if anything should happen to her, that we should entrust the affairs of the Church to you. If you intend to fight alongside the Alliance, then I will follow you as well. Is that acceptable, Claude? Of course. I can't think of anything more reassuring than having both Teach and the Knights on our side. Together, we'll stop the Emperor and her reckless ambitions. Well met, Professor. I trust that you have not had any complaints about me lately. Good. For any trouble I may have caused, please accept my most humble apology. I've decided that it would be inappropriate for me to continue my search for a spouse while we are at war. I expect that means you will not be receiving any more complaints. I hope that puts you more at ease. Actually, the introspection I've gained setting aside my search has motivated me to amend my conduct. <laughs> not the phrasing I choose, but you're not wrong. Selfishly pursuing my own desires caused me to behave inconsiderately. For instance, it was arrogant and rude to invite ladies to dine with me purely to evaluate them. Our experiences in battle have also given me cause to doubt certain preconceptions I once held. Previously, I had considered it a requirement for my future spouse to come from a noble line. 
I once thought that commoners lacked the power to influence the wider world, as history might suggest. To find a commoner who made a real impact, one has to look all the way back to Nemesis. That was my belief at any rate. But I realized that I've actually had an influential commoner right in front of me all along. Don't you see? I'm referring to you. You may wield the power of a crest, but you are so much more than just that. You have managed to charm everyone around you, to compel them to trust and follow you. Though you may not realize it, that is no mean feat. It is altering the course of history in Fodlan. Your example puts my prior beliefs to shame. I appreciate the kind words. I have always sought to embody the ideal of nobility. That, at least, is a goal I continue to stand by. But now I know that bloodline alone is not sufficient to gauge a person's worth. I've learned much of this from you. You are humble and open-minded, despite your power and skill. That is why I, at least, find you so charismatic. Perhaps that is the wrong way to say it. What I mean is that you set an admirable example. I can only hope someday to be your equal. Of course, you had better keep an eye on me, because I can achieve anything I set out to do. For I am none other than the handsome and talented Lawrence Hellman Gloucester. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Quite delicious. Yes. Yes. Yes, I agree. Yes. Yes, I agree. I wonder what your favorite food is. Meat? Veggies? Fish, perhaps. Oh, or maybe sweets. What? Is there something on my face? Hmm? Strength and stamina are necessary for fighting on horseback, as is footwork. Thank you for the treat. I had such a great time. another battle coming up. What do you think of our chances? Winning is always the goal. At any rate, I've done everything I can to prepare. That's the right attitude. I'm sure they're doing all they can on their side, too. I don't doubt it, but however strong they are, it's no more than a Fodlan concern. Who knows how far this world extends beyond the boundaries of Fodlan? Talk of strength or weakness doesn't amount to much when it's only in relation to a tiny corner of the world. Guess you're right. Thinking about it like that, even this war seems like a storm in a teacup. Exactly. It's nothing more than an internal quarrel amongst the people of Fodlan. <laughs> Typical laid-back Claude. I always like talking to you. Your perspective on the world is so refreshing. Things I thought were obvious turn out not to be. The way you think, that changes the way you see things. Common sense never tells the whole story. It's similar to what we were talking about before, about how you need to doubt yourself first. True enough, 
But where did you get these ideas? That perspective of looking past the walls of Fodlan, when it's all we can see in front of us. Do you really want to know? I do. Uh, but I'm afraid now isn't the time. When this war is won, I'll tell you all about it. It'll be easier for me to show you than to tell you. Show me? Are we going somewhere? It's quite a distance. You'll start to appreciate how big the world is if you go. <laughs> Sounds eye-opening. I'll look forward to it. Can we call it a promise? Yes, it's a promise. But first, let's win this war and leave it far behind us. Sorry, Claude. You can't go past. Huh? Ah, Cyril. It's you. Is there a problem? It's not the first time I've been to the Holy Tomb. Rhea herself took me there once. Besides, the inside's been scoured by the Imperial Army. There's nothing left there now. Don't matter. Lady Rhea said nobody could go in, so I can't let you through. I gotta do what Lady Rhea says. You wanna break them rules? Then you'll be her enemy. If you're trying to do that, I'll have to fight you. Fine, I get it. I wouldn't hesitate to make an enemy of Rhea if it came to that. But I'd rather not fight with you. So I'll back off. For now. Why is that? Does it matter? Dunno. With your status, you could smack me to the ground and walk right over me. I guess. But I wouldn't. We're friends. I thought you were the kind of guy who'd smack down just about anybody if you needed to. You really are a stubborn one. All right, then. I'll tell you. I swore I'd change this world so that those without status are no longer oppressed. Though you were never one of the people I was hoping to save. I never knew that there were people in Almira in your kind of situation. I realized that my own perspective was too narrow. You helped me realize that. So, I owe you. Did you just say you're all about saving people who are oppressed? Really? I did. Is it so strange to hear that from me? It's just... You reminded me of Lady Rhea there for a second. Lady Rhea always tried to save us folks without any status in the world. Like when she let an outsider like me stay at the monastery. That was real nice. She brought in those kids from Remire Village when they lost their parents and... Well, I'm not a religious man. I'm sure Rhea wouldn't want to be lumped in with a guy like me. Lady Rhea didn't do those things because the goddess told her she should. She did it because she wanted to. I can tell you that. I see. In that case, maybe I don't need to make an enemy of her. Thanks, Cyril. I think you've brought me a step closer to my dream. Thanks to you too, Claude. If I was able to help you, then that makes me happy. <laughs> Picking wildflowers? Seems such a common activity for someone like you. To me, the most beautiful flower is the one that blossoms by its own strength. Lysithia, please accept this as... Knock it off! Uh, sorry. It's just that the thorns are a bit sharp. And I'm not a fan of killing nature. True sympathy, even for the smallest wildflower. I admire your kindness. When you inherit your house, that kindness will be a balm to your subjects. 
They and the neighboring lords will trust you instinctively. Politics. Again. The Alliance has been harmed in the past by lords who thought only of themselves, who saw others as a means to an end. But you, you understand others' pain. With you around, I am quite hopeful that the Alliance will flourish again. That's not something you should get your hopes up about. House Ordelia will end with my father. I'm sorry? I understand you have a distaste for politics, but could you really allow a noble house three centuries old to fall to ruin? This goes beyond you and even your house. What would become of Fodlin if all its noble houses withered away in such a manner? The people would be in disarray. The balance of power would crumble. Chaos would rule. No, it's just... My body, unfortunately, is not built to last. And I have no siblings. When I die, that's the end. What? Noble birth has been nothing but a source of pain for me. For me, and for my parents. We got sucked into the rebellion in the Empire, and it led to... many responsibilities for us. The things we went through. I can hardly bear to speak of it. All I want now is to give my mother and father the chance to live out their years in peace. I intend to do whatever I can to ease the hardships of our people while I still have life left in me. Naturally, I worry about what will come to pass after I'm gone, but I'm sure things will work out so long as there are people like you around working so hard for a better future. So you have been thinking of the future, even despite all of that. I... I am so sorry, I had no idea. Lysithia, I have offended you most persistently. Please find it in your heart to forgive my impudence. Don't worry about it. If you're so insistent upon being my friend, I'm sure more tasty snacks and tea will help persuade me. But if speaking of the future holds such importance, better to find someone who actually has one. I understand. Yes, let's take tea together again soon. Hey, Raphael. Reading a letter? Well, if it isn't old Ignatz. I got a message here from my sis. Oh, a letter from Maya. I haven't seen her in so long. I bet she's all grown up. Nah, she's still a shrimp. It's been a while since I saw her, but she's probably only up to your shoulders. Wow, I can't believe she's gotten that tall. I wrote to tell her about how we're friends again. Do you remember this? Is that the picture I drew for her? She sent it along with the letter. <laughs> I guess she held on to it since we were kids. All right, that's enough looking. She said to show it to you and send it right back. <laughs> to think she's handling my little doodle with such reverence. That warms my heart. I remember the day I gave Maya that drawing. She looked so happy. Before then, I never knew I could make people happy with art. It was a revelation. I've been drawing and painting ever since, in hopes of becoming an artist one day. You're much better now, so it must be paying off! I bet you could be a real artist. No, that's not possible, I'm afraid. I have to consider my parents' wishes. Who cares what your parents want? It's not like you're a noble or nothing. Your fate is your own! Huh. You think so? I know so. And I'm gonna support you with whatever dream you got. Okay, let me see. What's the first step to follow your dreams? Oh, got it! You should paint me! Uh, paint you? Yeah! I want my little sis to know how good I'm doing here, so I gotta send her proof. Plus, she'll be doubly impressed if it's a painting you made. <laughs> good point. I can certainly try to capture your likeness. I'll paint you with a warm, cheerful expression on your face, to bring Maya comfort. My face? No way! You gotta get my muscles in there! Mostly my chest and arms. Are you sure that's what she'd want to see? Wait! Before you start painting, I gotta get me a little more training in. If my muscles aren't bulging, then what's the point? I'm not sure about this.
Um, Hilda? I wanted to thank you for helping me in the infirmary. I brought you these pastries. Ooh, thanks. I'll put some tea on. Have a seat. That sounds lovely. But I also wanted to apologize for always causing you such trouble. It's no trouble. No trouble at all. Everything tastes better with friends, don't you think? I give you help, you give me sweets, we have a little tea party. It's a good arrangement, I'd say. I'm used to it now, so if it changed suddenly, I would feel disoriented. I suppose if you're enjoying yourself, then it can't be that bad. Sure, you don't seem to mind listening while I gab, so I'm enjoying myself plenty. But do let me know if I'm too boring. No, no, you're not boring at all. In fact, you're, um, very good at talking. You're also good with your hands. You can clean and organize better than almost anyone. I envy you. Oh, stop. I'm blushing. I'm not as great as all that. We're both a lot different on the inside than we look on the outside, don't you think? How do you mean? People who see you think you're so proper, but you're actually clumsy. That's why I help you, because there are some things you just can't do. I'm sorry you always have to clean up after me. I didn't say I hated it. In fact, you've taught me a few new techniques I can use to persuade people. Maybe I'll start imitating you a little bit. I'll do the Marianne. That sheepish, sorry, and those quavering downcast eyes. But that might not work as well for me. People would probably assume that I'd hit my head. Oh, well. <laughs> Aw, Mary Ann laughing at me. <laughs> so rude and yet so adorable. I'm so sorry. I just can't help it. When I imagine you doing those things, I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's rather un like I'll admit. <clears throat> okay, that's enough laughing. <laughs> I'm so... <laughs> so so sorry. <laughs> Hey, uh, are you all right? That tea's hot, Marianne. Be careful. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, ouch, hot. Come on, what did I just say? I know, I'm sorry. Oh, ow, oh, ow, oh, ow, oh. hot. Oh, boy. A real steady hand, that Marianne. It's nice to see her laugh. Sure, she was laughing at me, but how can I get mad when she looks so dang cute? Marianne, are you not going to pray? I finished. What is it? I just wanted to apologize. It's fine, Ferdinand. You did nothing wrong. Last time we spoke, I did not quite finish saying what I wanted to say. You say I did nothing wrong, so perhaps you will hear me out this time? Very well. What is it? Rather than mourning the way things are, is it not better to accept reality and move forward from there? Accept and move forward? Precisely. You curse your heritage and reject your present situation. That makes you gloomy, even despairing. As long as you are held back by that way of thinking, nothing is ever going to change. What about you? Do you really believe that you accept whatever comes in life? I do. Come what may, I will never falter. How? Well, each person is born with a purpose. We must fulfill that purpose, no matter our circumstances. It imbues our lives with meaning and direction. That is what I believe, anyway. Everyone has something they are meant to accomplish. That is true for nobles, commoners, even bandits. Uh, I see. So that's what you believe. Do you really think it's possible that someone like me has a purpose to fulfill? Yes, of course. Oh. 
I'll give this some serious thought. Thank you, Ferdinand. Your words have deeply moved me. Is that so? How wonderful. I will pray that you find the answers you seek. How incredible. What a striking color. Ah, Professor, look at this stone. Such a brilliant blue. You don't normally find stones like this around here. I ought to grind it down. I wonder if it would still be the same color. To make pigment for my art. Good supplies don't come cheap. I prefer to make my own. Blue is especially expensive. How fortunate that I chanced upon this remarkable blueness. Oh, I'm sorry. There I go again, blathering on and on about painting. Oh, yes. But I know that I can get rather caught up in it and, uh, enthusiastic. You know, Professor, no matter how impassioned I become about my art, you never hold it against me. One could argue that I'm better off preparing for our next battle. I am becoming a knight. Oh, Professor, please don't say things like that. I gave up on my artistic dreams long ago. To support my family, I will be a knight. That's that. No, I won't. I'm doing the right thing. I'll continue with my art as a hobby. I don't think I could ever give it up. When I see something beautiful, I can't suppress the urge to paint it. I don't have a choice. And if my art can bring happiness to even one person, that's good enough for me. Professor? I have a favor to ask. I'm painting a portrait right now. When it's finished, I'd like to give the piece to you. Would you take it? Perhaps it can bring you a little happiness. That will have made the effort well worth it. Oh, excellent! Is that a promise? Because I'm really going to put my heart in it. Uh, that is... I'm going to enjoy partaking in this casual hobby of mine. 
A country with no king has no future. That's why I made my way here. Professor, don't let me down. Yes, let's. Find me a worthy opponent to battle, and I'll be content. Professor, it's not just for my village that I'm fighting alongside you here, you know. It's also that Captain Gerald asked me, his first and greatest apprentice, to look out for you. Of course, it wouldn't be enough just to keep you alive. It's my duty to make sure you win, too. So do your best, Professor, and count on me to watch your back. Dear Goddess, I ask for guidance. Professor, you're always watching over me, aren't you? I've spent my entire life avoiding people. Speaking to others was so difficult for me, so I made a point to always be alone. Animals and the goddess were the only ones I could really open up to. Do you remember the time you asked what it was I prayed for? Yes, but that wasn't the case. Back then, I felt that my life served no purpose, and that I was nothing more than a burden. In truth, I was begging the goddess to take me to her. That was my daily prayer. But now I fear the idea of dying and being left alone. I have friends who accept me for who I am now, in spite of my crest. And I have you watching over me. I finally learned to accept the kindness and warmth of others. It's because of you, Professor. Because of you, I've decided to live. I'm sorry to have worried you, but I'm all right now. Even if I'm separated from you or any of my friends, the memories I've made here will give me the strength to continue on. Um... I'm sure I'll have the strength to move forward if we're together. <sighs> At last, I return to my domain. My lonely paradise! My realm of exquisite solitude! <laughs> huh? Professor? Is that, um... Is that you? You, um... You didn't hear that just now, did you? Right! You didn't? Well, I'm um, good! Strong, but Claude could give me a run for my money. I mean, he's dragged the knights into this. You ought to be careful, Professor. I wonder if you've got a hidden headstrong side. You must be hiding it really well, though. Excuse me, could you do me a favor? Excuse me, could you do me a favor? No. Hey! 
Do you have time for a request? You've done me a great service. La, 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 la. Professor, oh my, it's so good to see you. These days, so many old friends seem to be disappearing. But you, you're here. It's incredible to see you again after five years. I have a feeling your name will go down in history. up on ever seeing you again. Where have you been hiding? Anyway, now that we're reunited in the land of the living, I must fulfill my promise. That's right. I promised the captain I'd protect you in his stead. And now I'll make good on my word. Professor? Greetings, Professor. Nothing to report. You know, it's such a thrill to be able to greet you like this again. I almost died as well in the battle five years ago, but I won't allow any enemies to get into this place again. I promise you that. Even if the Death Knight shows up, I'll be sure to... Well, for now, I'll keep training, so I can eventually feel confident that I can stop him. Professor. <laughs> Got a favor to ask. There's, I hope. They... Hello there. This one, yes? Return soon, please. Professor? Professor. Thanks for your help out there. Battles tend to go smoother with you around. I can count on you doing most of the heavy lifting. It may be unwise to think this way on the battlefield, but I feel I can trust your commands without question. Don't we all? But, judging by the results of our recent battles, you're clearly good at this. I've also noticed that you've been putting me in more precarious situations lately. Almost like you know I won't question your orders. I'm glad you trust me to get the job done, but still, I knew you were doing it on purpose. You're in a very important position now that you're leading the charge against the Empire. Funny to think you used to just teach at the Officer's Academy. Your old students still call you Professor. That's no title for the commander of an army. You'll always be their Professor, huh? You sure are an interesting one. My people lost the war, and I was left to wander Fodlan alone. But I guess meeting you was my prize. You look confused. Did you not know any of this? I was living in my homeland of Dagda, up until the Imperial Army destroyed it ten years ago. But being a mercenary, I have no real allegiance. That's why I'm working here now. Don't worry, though. I don't plan to turn on you. 
Professor, I have a proposal. Why not go beyond the Knights of Saros? Instead, uniting with allies from all across Fodland to fight for our cause. Looking back, it would have been best to ally with the Kingdom and join forces against the Empire. But now the Kingdom is not exactly... well... Festival, the leaders of all territories were supposed to gather together and pledge perpetual peace. But now that hope has been dashed, thanks to the Emperor's actions. The kingdom is also vastly different than before. I guess we'll never return to the world as it was five years ago. What the? Hey! Hey. I'm more of a mercenary than a knight these days. I work to get paid. I never was too attached to Feldlin. I was considering leaving soon, but I might change my mind if you're around. In Lady Rhea's absence, I will follow you. That's what she would want me to do. Know that wherever you might lead us, I'll continue searching for Lady Rhea. Good, because I will not budge on that point. Welcome back, Professor. Time for a breather. Hey, Professor. Yep, noticed you have been too. Seems like it's been a real rough day for just about everybody, huh? I've been so busy I still haven't eaten. I hope there's still food left. How come you're carrying that around? Whatever, I'm hungry. Mm. Mm. When you're hungry enough, just about anything tastes good. Ah, <sighs> what a day. I need a nap, but I still gotta get the dining hall cleaned up. <laughs> Professor, that's funny. You push yourself harder than anybody else. You make me look lazy. Besides, I don't even break a sweat doing this stuff. The day Lady Rhea comes home, I want her to see the monastery the way it was five years ago. That's why I do all this stuff for her. And the harder I work, the better. Heck, I'd do more than I do now if there were hours in the day. But I can't go without sleep. Tried once. You must think I'm pretty weird, huh, Professor? I'm always on about Lady Rhea, and I'm not even from Fodlin. I bet most people around here think I'm kind of weird. But I'm real grateful for everything Lady Rhea's done for me. That's nice of you to say. Real nice. Thanks, Professor. It's good to know you like me. Helps me feel even more at home. I've heard people say that good folks have a heart of gold. Not real gold, I mean. Just they always care about everybody else. Even guys like me. Lady Ray is incredible. But I figure you're just the same, Professor. <sighs> okay. I guess I gotta give in and get some sleep. I'll get up extra early to make up for it. Good night, Professor. Okay, I'm thinking... In the Alliance, the Lords have been at odds, so peace and prosperity have declined there as well. In particular, bandits have been appearing in large numbers near the Great Bridge of Murden. Rumor has it that the Domain's Lord Someone by the name of Acheron is a completely ineffectual leader.
Edelgard is controlling the Empire. She is putting the pressure on the Kingdom and Alliance. Empire and religion are at open war. It will be... difficult for us at first. But corrupt nobles are many. That means the common people will rebel and be joining our side. With you, Professor, the battle tides will... Uh, will turn, I have certainty. House Gautier, and I'm fighting alongside a bunch of Alliance people? I can just imagine my father's face contorted in anger, and the delightful words he must have used to describe me. I don't know how staying and fighting for Fargus would have helped. Sorry, Professor. I don't regret my decisions. I'm just thinking out loud. And I'm hoping I haven't made a big mistake. Oh. Hey there. What are you doing up at this hour? My brain's just busy. Thoughts keep going around and around in there, and meanwhile my eyes are wide open. At times like this, I like to gaze up at the stars to clear my head. I've been that way since I was a kid. Looking up at the big starry sky makes my dreams feel small. Which makes it feel like I can actually make them come true. I didn't believe in gods when I was a kid. Maybe that's because the night sky took their place for me. Hey, Teach. Will you talk with me a while? I bet you figured this out, but I wasn't born in Fodlan. Where I come from, the people of Fodlan are looked down on as cowards. Technically, that cowardice runs in my veins. On my mother's side, anyway. That's why the people who were around me when I was growing up thought of me as an outsider. But I don't believe the people of Fodlin are cowards. That kind of perspective is just based on ignorance. The person from Fodlin who I know best is my mother. She fell in love with a man from the wrong side of the border and had the guts to leave home to pursue that love. I always threw that in the faces of anyone who tried to make a fool of me. My mother is proof the people of Fodlin aren't all cowards. Just saying that doesn't achieve anything though. I need to destroy the prejudices that have taken root in my homeland. That's why I came here, to see Fodlin with my own eyes. I thought I might be able to find a new perspective that could help me change things. And what did I find? That the people here view anyone who's an outsider as a beast of sorts. I was shocked. Even though our cultures and beliefs are completely different, our two lands have that much in common. That's when I realized the only way to change things is to bring the whole world together and start anew. That's the dream I've been working toward since I first entered the Officers' Academy five years ago. To unify the Alliance, and then all of Fodlin, and to bring a new set of values to this new land of mine. After that, I'd expand that vision to the rest of the world, break down the walls, and let a new perspective come rushing in, start all over. Do you think that's just a crazy pipe dream, or a brilliant ambition? Not too long ago, I would have said it was too much for me to accomplish on my own. But that's not how I feel anymore. And that's because I have you on my side now. Lately, I've spent a lot of time thinking about how I wouldn't have made it this far without you. You and me, Teach, we can go anywhere, do anything. I hope that you always walk in step with me. At least, until the day comes when we can look out at the peaceful world we've built, together. Okay. Hey, Professor! You won't believe what happened. I figured I couldn't go back to the Empire after Garrick Mock fell, so I started drifting across the Kingdom and Alliance. Then, I just happened to run into our old class, so we came back to the monastery together.
My cooking is so good, it's been called seductive. Should I show you what I can do, Professor? Hmm, right. I do so enjoy cutting up vegetables in preparation to cook. So, I'll do that and leave you with the cleanup. Oh. Professor. Hey, Professor. Can we talk? I feel terrible about the last time we spoke. I was trying to apologize and just ended up losing my temper again. I'm really sorry. I figured you'd say that, but I still feel like an idiot. Somehow, I just have a hard time keeping my feelings in check around you. And I think if I don't just tell you what I'm thinking, we'll never be able to have a normal conversation. So, let me clear the air. I want us to, uh, engage. Uh, yeah, exactly. I know it's a sudden thing to ask, but I'm not going to feel settled until I know where I stand. Would you do that for me? Good. Don't hold back, okay? I want to see you at your absolute best. Phew. You got me. I'm completely outmatched. Maybe. But you were definitely stronger. Honestly, that's what I needed to see. You're a true successor to Captain Gerald's style of swordplay. I almost felt like you were him. I thought I was competing with you. But that's as pointless as competing against him would have been. So instead of that, I'm going to focus on keeping the promise I made to him. Captain Gerald said that, if anything should happen to him, I'd have to support you in his place. He didn't sound serious at the time, but it was right before he... You know, before we lost him. So, I've decided. I'd like to do just what he said. I know I'm not as strong as I need to be, but I swear to you, I'll train until I am. What do you say? Can I call you my employer? Yes! It's official. I'll protect you no matter what. <laughs> Members of the Knights tell me that Father left their ranks five years ago. They say he announced he was returning to the kingdom, but nobody's heard from him since. I haven't received word that he went back home to Mother. Where could he be? Where are you, Father? <laughs> Fighting alongside you and everyone else is a dream come true, Professor. And don't worry about my little sis. Right now, she's back home helping out with the family business. I kind of figured I was going to be stuck going back and taking over for her. But thanks to you and Claude, I get to work on my dream of becoming a proper knight. Professor, I have written to my father to signal my intention to remain here. Not that I require his approval to do so. There is not much for me to gain by returning to Alliance territory now. But by staying, I will be able to influence the course of events directly on the field of battle. Naturally, someone needs to make certain he does not lead the Alliance to ruin. I need a favor. I could use a hand. Hello there. Professor! Hey, Professor. Something's been bothering me. 
Remember that suspicious guy I chased after back when I was a student? A knight scolded me for it, but at the time, I really thought I was doing the right thing. Now that I've had more experience on the battlefield, though... I've been looking for you. There isn't much time, so I'll keep this brief. The knights encountered a band of brigands while out marching. It was hard fought, but we prevailed. Our soldiers are highly trained, but the enemy was formidable, and we weren't expecting combat. There were a number of casualties among our troops. Much appreciated, but there's a reason I need to bring this to your attention. Do you recall the incident five years ago involving a suspicious individual in Garrig Mach? These brigands all bore the same scorpion tattoo that we found on the arm of that man. Oh no. I thought that might be of interest to you. Don't mention it. If you'll excuse me, I need to get back to my duties. <laughs> Heck of a coincidence, right? As soon as I mention that suspicious guy, this happens. But some of the knights died in combat. They died because of what I did five years ago. This is my fault. If I'd stayed quiet and tracked the guy down like you said, we would have stopped those brigands sooner. And I wouldn't have blood on my hands. It's no use trying to comfort me. You know I'm right. Just say it. Those poor knights. It's all my fault. Hello there. you are unharmed no matter the path you walk i will be with you every step of the way anything you ask of me i shall see it through you saved my life and i am in your debt yes during his search for her grace the archbishop seteth has visited churches all across the land it served to demonstrate to the devout across Fodland that the Church of Seros is still going strong. As a result, the faithful are not currently in a state of chaos. Teach. Hey there, my friend. It's funny how the monastery was once in ruins, but now it's downright bustling. Thanks to a little promise five years ago, our buddies have all gathered, and even the knights have returned. It's like we were all just waiting for you to awaken. And now, we're all going to band together against the Imperial Army. You should go and talk to everyone if you can. There may be some who are still on the fence. Fixed up quite a bit, but its battle scars aren't so easily erased. To think that a glorious cathedral with a thousand year history would end up like this. I'll rebuild this place someday. This cathedral is the symbol of Fodlan. Maybe I should paint a picture of the beautiful cathedral of old. While I still remember what it looked like. Hey, Professor. I think you've been working too much lately. The battle is going to keep going with or without you, but you're the one doing the most out there. It's real impressive how you can focus on giving orders and fighting. I don't think I could do both in the same battle. I see you running all over the place, even after the battle's over. I just don't want you to wear yourself out. Oh yeah? 
As soon as you say you're fine, that's when it hits you. No offense, Professor, but don't you think some folks might be taking advantage of you? Claude keeps asking you to do things, but you never say no. Like when you gave that speech to the troops. That didn't seem like something you wanted to do. I know you gotta follow orders on the battlefield, but you shouldn't have to do things off the battlefield if you don't wanna. What do you mean? Like studying? Sure, it's not my favorite thing in the world, but that was to keep my little sis fat. I had good reason for it. The same, huh? I think I get what you mean. You do things you don't want to do for the sake of everyone else. That's real noble of you, Professor. I guess I can't get in your way if you're doing it for the right reasons. Okay, then. I'm gonna keep trying to do my best. But now, I'm gonna do it for you. My little sis is important to me. But you're real important, too. I always work hard for the people who matter to me. And having more of them in my life just means I gotta work even harder. What do you think? Really? I wasn't expecting you to say that. You're gonna make me blush. We gotta keep working hard together then. At least until this war's over. I'll work to make sure you don't collapse from exhaustion. You got nothing to worry about, Professor. I've been training non-stop. I got your back, no matter what. <laughs> What? Dear Goddess, even with the church in shambles, we can still pray. The Goddess will surely hear our prayers. But still, I hope the church can return to its former beauty someday. <laughs> appears to be wrong with my throat. I hope this song reaches the goddess's ears. It seems that in the last five years, the monks here have left this place for the town below. However, once they learn of our return, perhaps they'll come back. I hope the monastery can return to normal someday. like the kingdom and empire have been in a sorry state too but we can't let that get us down let's work together for the common good like we did five years ago
I don't know anything about rebuilding, but I can sure do my best to clean up the mess. I'm gonna keep Lady Rhea's room spotless, so she can use it right away whenever she gets back. You gotta find her, Professor. You just gotta. Oh. I have lost my dominion. My nobility may seem like nothing more than a title, but I will never lose my noble heart. I will stop Edelgard, even if it costs me my life. I have turned my blade against her now. I cannot go back on that decision. Professor, do you think I chose the wrong path? You are right. Patient. These past five years, my hands have been bound. But now, I can finally take action with a clear goal. I'm grateful to you and to everyone. Down with the Empire. Surely peace will soon follow if the Empire is overthrown. And my parents can finally find peace themselves. The promise was made five years ago, but I must say I'm rather impressed by how many of us managed to make it. Personally, I only showed up because I hope to see you again, Professor. I've been with my family in the Empire until recently. I admit to feeling a little guilty betraying Her Majesty, but only a little. Now that we're all together again, I suppose the fighting will begin soon. Professor, you haven't changed a bit. At your age, I'd expect your whole demeanor to have changed greatly over five years. Though, I suppose I haven't changed either, right? Thank you for noticing, by the way. Ah, just the two of us, forever young. <laughs> oh, let me have my fun. Thankfully, it appears the records and equipment I need for my research have not been damaged. I am most curious, though. You say you were asleep for five whole years. Incredible. Perhaps this is another effect of your crest. I do look forward to investigating you in greater detail. Wonderful news. I am most excited to begin. We must find the time, of course. Five long years I've searched for you and the Archbishop. It is a pleasure to see you again. The Church of Seros will follow you from now on, but please do not abandon the search for Lady Rhea. Thank you. I know the battles ahead will be dire, but we will support you with all our strength.
this food is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. This is my absolute favorite. How did you know, Professor? smell mm, it's amazing my fave in fact do you like it too hmm. I like seeing a table full of my favorite dishes Delicious food really takes my worries away. This is my favorite. I am rather happy you went out of your way to pick it, Professor. This dish. It was my father's favorite. Delicious! After a scrumptious meal like that, I feel that I can really seize the day. That looks delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. That looks appetizing. is delicious! My absolute favorite! I appreciate any good meal, but nothing beats enjoying my favorite food. I did not expect much from the dining hall, but this does not disappoint. I think I like this, but it's been a while, so I'm not sure. Yummy! Who made this? I'll have to give my compliments to the chef. Ah, oh, I can eat so much of this stuff. My stomach's growling just thinking about it.
Professor. Hello there. This one, yes? I think this one, yes? I thank you. This one, yes? I thank you. This one, yes? Return soon, please. Professor! <laughs> Headstrong. You're sweet, thanks. Thanks so much. You're a sweetheart. <laughs> Looks like I got it right. You really think I'm that great? That was pretty good, huh? Time wasn't wasted. We've got to keep working hard. I managed to get it. Oh, I'll get the next one too. Now to apply this knowledge. Effort for once. Yeah. Could be useful. 
I'd like to ask you something. That's right. Oh, you know, there is always something. It never ends. Lately, I have been feeling uneasy, impatient. Edelgard claims victory after victory. She never stops. Five years ago, she ascended the throne and swept away the corrupt nobles, my father included. I always thought I would be the one to unseat him, but she did it instead, with all the ease and indifference of someone cracking an egg. She put my father under house arrest. She stripped House Iyer of its power. Rather than accepting a role as her puppet, I left. Now I fight to topple the Empire. The disparity between Edelgard and myself is... obvious. She never stops moving forward. Single-minded. Never wavering. But where does that leave me? Here, flailing about, going nowhere, contributing nothing. But it is! That is the reality! Not once since our days at the Academy have I exceeded Edelgard's abilities. I saw her as a worthy opponent. She did not even see me as a contender. She did not even consider me at all. As the head of the Noble House Iyer, I must be able to achieve results. But all my efforts have come to nothing. Results are everything. I have not shown results. So I will be stagnating here forever. I appreciate your kind words, but you are wrong. I know that I have a massive wall to climb, and I must climb it alone. Even so, may I ask a favor? Professor, please keep an eye on my progress. I would appreciate if you were always by my side bearing witness to my accomplishments. I 
same with you this time, brother? No need to worry, Flame. Simply leave it all to me. Must you always take away all the fun from me? A most satisfactory result. All thanks to you. Thanking me? But you did everything. I understand more every day. Let's put it to the test. It's within my grasp. I work to grow. I'll do my best with this. How best to use this? There is always more to learn. It's all instinct now. Professor, let me sing for you. Do you not like my voice? It would make a Pegasus dance with joy. Not sure I should sing with everyone. I'm not great at harmonizing. Not bad. You're quite skilled. Shamir? What a rare treat for you to start a conversation for a change. Is it? It's not possible you came to ask for my help with something. Could it be you want to become closer friends? Don't flatter yourself. That's cruel. You could have at least hesitated a beat before answering. Last we spoke, you were questioning whether or not you belong here. You remember that, do you? Well, yes, I do think this is where I belong. For now. I have things that I want to achieve, and I can only do that by staying right where I am. That said, once I've done what I'm here to do, it's hard to say whether I'll stay or leave. I might end up searching for another place to belong. That is true for most people. Life would be tedious if we knew what lies ahead. Whether or not you belong in a place can change at any time. As soon as you settle in somewhere new, you begin to question your decision. That's true. I guess trying things out and searching for our own path is what life is about. And both of our paths have led us here. This is where we belong right now. Even if it's just a temporary coincidence, we should cherish it while it lasts. What are you going on about now? I'm just saying we should make the most of this time we have together since we don't know how long it'll last. Once it's gone, it might never come back. Right? Is this your sad attempt at flirting? <laughs> I will admit, you're an interesting one. <laughs> There you are, Lysithia. I've been looking for you. So, I have a hypothesis about your crests. I know you're the one who sent me that anonymous letter. There are things we must discuss. Ugh, it sounded like some bizarre love letter. What? No, of course not. However, I wonder what you would have done if it was. Now I'm just confused and grossed out. I'm sorry, but that is not the overall topic of discussion. Do pay attention. Pay attention to you? As though anything you say is worth listening to. It's not like you can tell me anything I don't already know. You don't have a very positive opinion of your crests, do you? That's why you should listen to me. Um... I've dug through all my books, and there's no record of anyone being born with two crests. You are, to be blunt, an impossible occurrence. For you to have a second crest, it must have been forcibly implanted after birth. 
Is that your theory, then? Yes, it is. To further the theory, if the power exists to implant a crest, then it must be possible to remove one, too. And that is the real issue at hand. I... I could have one removed? That's what Hanneman is working on understanding. I'm helping him with it. Professor Hanneman? Based on your reaction, it seems you want one of your crests removed. I don't think I'd give up having two crests if I were you. Is that so? Even if you've gone through horrifying experiments, endless trauma, and if you knew that all this pain meant you die very, very young? That's what you think? You're completely lacking in empathy, so of course you would make such a crass and foolish assumption. <laughs> That doesn't feel good at all. Ugh, why did he have to punch me so hard? Hey, Caspar. Something the matter? Oh, uh, hi, Hilda. Yeah, I just got in a little fight. No big deal. Definitely won. Your face is all swollen. That looks painful. Come on, let's get you to the infirmary. No, no, that's really too much. Like, like I said, I'm fine. Don't argue, just come along. You look ghoulish. Huh? Maybe it's worse than I thought. Oh, whatever. It can't hurt to have it looked at. There! That should do it. You'll be alright now. Great! Thanks, Hilda. I had no idea you were so good at this. I always tended to my big brother's wounds, so I have lots of experience. I'm curious, though. Why are you always getting into fights? You really got hurt. Surely it would have been better not to bother. It's not like I go looking for fights, and I'm not always the one who starts them. There are just a lot of guys in this world who won't listen to reason. Somebody's got to beat some sense into them. Hmm. So that's why you're always picking fights. Why not ignore them, or ask someone else for help? Maybe that's how you'd handle it, but I can't just look the other way. How very gallant. But maybe you should try showing a little restraint. You really think that? Yes, I do. I don't think you can solve all your problems by throwing a few punches. The world's a big place. At this moment, all over Fodlin, countless people are in some kind of trouble. But they'll figure things out one way or another, even without you there. Try to hold back and see what happens. Maybe you'll be surprised. Besides, if you're always picking fights, you might get so badly injured that you can't protect me. Now that's a good point right there. I guess I could give this whole restraint thing a shot. My cooking is so good, it's been called seductive. Should I show you what I can do, Professor? Hmm, right. I do so enjoy cutting up vegetables in preparation to cook. So, I'll do that and leave you with the cleanup.
I did not expect much from the dining hall, but this does not disappoint. This is my absolute favorite. How did you know, Professor? smell mm, it's amazing my fave in fact do you like it too i would be liking that greatly This food is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. I appreciate any good meal, but nothing beats enjoying my favorite food. to eat when you stare my apologies you and the professor are both so fascinating i simply cannot help myself Looks delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. Hmm. I like seeing a table full of my favorite dishes. Yummy! Who made this? I'll have to give my compliments to the chef. Delicious! After a scrumptious meal like that, I feel that I can really seize the day. Delicious food really takes my worries away. Eating food always fires me up. Hoorah! Let's go fight somebody! This is delicious! My absolute favorite! This is nearly as delicious as Mother's cooking! I would happily eat this every day!
me, 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 me. <clears throat> Something appears to be wrong with my throat. I hope this song reaches the goddess's ears. Need something? This one? You're all set. This one? You're all set. See you again soon. Polishing my skills. I got it right. Oh, I was just lucky. Professor. Do you have a moment, Professor? I need to speak with you. Thank you so much. This is what I wanted to address. This letter from my adoptive father just arrived. Have I not mentioned him? 
He's the reason I first came to the Officer's Academy. He's also the one who dragged me from the church where I was living, just so he could use my crest. My crest does not yet belong to a house, so he plans to use it as leverage to marry into the nobility. He's a very greedy man who was a roving merchant before adopting me, but now he's in the capital. This letter says that he's finally arranged to marry me off to a wealthy noble. <sighs> I know he's just thinking of himself, but can't he see that this isn't a priority when we're at war? Uh, I don't know what to do about this proposal. I can't see any way around it, so I fear that I must. I just don't want to let go of the life that I've made for myself. I know it's not what my heart wants, but I don't have the strength to say no. I believe I've mentioned this before, but I want to work in service of the church. Well, I suppose it doesn't necessarily have to be the church, but I want to help those in need. If I were to marry a noble, I think it would be difficult to realize that dream. It's just... I've always allowed myself to follow the whims of those above me. I convinced myself that everything in life was at the will of the goddess. I was blind to reality. I believed it was her will to both pull me from the church and guide me to the officer's academy. The decision to enter this war was the first time I acted of my own free will. My adoptive father opposed this decision, but I somehow managed to convince him. Still, I couldn't free myself of him completely. This letter is proof of that. It's not that I'm scared of him, but there is something that worries me. Ah, I knew you'd understand, Professor. I've sat down to write a reply several times, but I can't muster up the courage or the words. I was hoping you could provide me with the encouragement I need. That's a very good point. We're only given one life, so we must do all we can to pursue our happiness. Okay. I think that may have been just the push I was looking for. I'll tell him the truth. That I found a life worth pursuing, and I must decline the proposal. Maybe I should tell him I've fallen for someone else. <laughs> Why, it's you, Professor. Isn't that obvious? <laughs> I'm just teasing. Now I'm off to write this letter and stand my ground. Thank you for your encouragement. Most satisfactory result. All thanks to you. Thanking me? But you did everything. This is working out. I still need to improve. I see how this works. I'm starting to get it. Perhaps I'll expand the scope of my research. Looks like I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Feeling pretty good about this. These ones look good. I probably shouldn't pick them, though. Ah, Mary Ann. Harvesting the crops? Oh, yes, Linhart. Um, I found which vegetables are ripe and ready, but would you mind picking them for me? 
Ah, uh, see, you've mistaken me for someone who sticks his hands in the dirt. I'm just afraid that if I touch them, well... Oh, I see. You're afraid everyone who eats them will suffer bad luck. Yes, it's true. I wouldn't want anyone else to suffer because of me. Marianne, that's simply not the way the world works. You see... Oh, forget it. Tell me which ones to pick. Thank you so much, Linhart. I'm happy to help, but I'm beat. You'll have to carry them yourself, so take them straight in, okay? Um, okay. Oh, actually, before I go, do you mind if I ask you a question? I've been thinking. Isn't it more the case your crest brings happiness rather than bad luck? Happiness? I don't understand. Yes, happiness. Because your crest is so rare. It excites my mind and... Well, if not for your crest, we might never have met. And I feel that would be a tremendous loss. Backbreaking as it was, I enjoyed today. I'm quite happy right now, and it's due entirely to your crest. Uh, I suppose so when you put it that way, but I... It's a huge breakthrough to know that your crest causes happiness instead of bad luck. I'd love to study it thoroughly, but only if you'd agree. Really, I just want to find a way for your crest to bring you happiness, too. I'm sorry, but I can't. I have to decline. I understand. May I ask one more thing, though? Could you please hand me one of those vegetables? I don't think that's a good idea, but if you insist... Thank you, Marianne. I think this looks like a very lucky vegetable. <laughs> Flay, is something the matter? I thought I made it clear that I do not want you meddling in the affairs of me and my friends. I am not quite sure what you are referring to, but I promise you I would never try to stand in your way. It has come to my attention that you have been running about asking people what they think of me. Asking everyone! Well, of course I have. It took me quite some time. But for you, it was well worth the effort. I was able to confirm that you are getting along well with everyone. It was very reassuring. I cannot emphasize enough how embarrassed I was when I found out. And you have caused such a stir for those whom you questioned. Why, one person even said he feared for his life when you cornered him in the dining hall. The dining hall? Ah, I know the fellow you are referring to. Yes, I've seen the way he looks at you. I recognized in an instant that he had impure feelings for you. As your brother, I took it upon myself to test his resolve. I merely asked him if he was prepared to lay his life on the line for my beloved sister. He is nothing more than a friend. Kindly keep out of my social business in the future. I am happy to see that you are making friends, but you should weigh your options more carefully. Who I befriend is absolutely none of your business. Do you know what they call people like you? Overprotective meddlers. I am no longer a child. Are you incapable of trusting me, even a little? Of course I trust you, but as an elder brother, I have a certain responsibility. As my brother? Obviously. Oh, never mind it. If you'll excuse me.
My cooking is so good, it's been called seductive. Should I show you what I can do, Professor? Hmm, right. I do so enjoy cutting up vegetables in preparation to cook. So I'll do that and leave you with the cleanup. Oh. I did not expect much from the dining hall, but this does not disappoint. This is my absolute favorite! How did you know, Professor? This dish. It was my father's favorite. Delicious! After a scrumptious meal like that, I feel that I can really seize the day. smell mm, it's amazing my fave in fact do you like it too hmm. I like seeing a table full of my favorite dishes That looks delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. Oh, my favorite food. You've got to try this. This is delicious! My absolute favorite! I appreciate any good meal, but nothing beats enjoying my favorite food. This food is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. I would be liking that greatly. Yummy! Who made this? I'll have to give my compliments to the chef. Ah, oh, I can eat so much of this stuff. My stomach's growling just thinking about it.
eating delicious food really takes my worries away. Ooh, <laughs> I love this stuff. Did you know that? Singing's okay, but I should really have a cute dance to go along with it. Yeah! I'll sing so loud that my voice is gonna reach the sky! I was just lucky. be useful. That was easy thanks to you. <laughs> I could get used to this. Professor. Apologies for bothering you so late. 
I just really wanted to speak with you. Thank you. You see, I've been feeling conflicted about my future. It may seem petty to worry about such things in the middle of a war like this. This isn't something I open up about with many people. Feeling such a sense of inner turmoil while a war rages on, and others are fighting with all they have, well, it feels a little selfish. The truth is, I've wanted to be a knight ever since I was a small child. Not just any knight, like one you might find serving within the castle guard, but a true knight, one serving a master. However, my father has always had different plans for me. He wants me to marry for the benefit of the Galatea family. Defying my father feels wrong. I've seen how he struggled over the years. His burden has always been far greater than any I've had to bear myself. While he fed me extravagant meals, he subsisted on meager portions and watered down soups. He never once complained, even though he must have been starving. Knowing his sacrifices, I've never been able to tell him of my dream of becoming a knight. Although ultimately, I find myself betraying his wishes. Now that I've parted ways with my father, there is nothing to stop me from pursuing my dream. But even if I do become a knight, I feel an unease deep within me. I fear I will never escape this guilt I carry, that I have shunned my duty as a noble. To follow both my dream and my duty? I... I had never considered that as an option. Perhaps there is a way. <laughs> Even with the academy days long behind us, you're still a professor through and through. Always listening to others' troubles and offering up your wisdom. I really am grateful for all that you do for us, Professor. I hope you'll always be here as a guide to everyone. I know I myself would appreciate that deeply. <laughs> caught me off guard. I was actually just thinking about you. Just a moment ago? Well, I... I... I, I am afraid I just do not understand you. When we first met, I sensed something different about you. Something mysterious. And now I am convinced your existence itself is very special. Thinking on it, I know it to be true. You have a crest that should have been lost long ago. You wield the sword of the Creator as if it is nothing. Your hair and eye color changed on that day five years ago. To the same sort of color as mine and my brother's. I do not know. My brother refuses to speak to me of it. Since then, you have led us into battle and, thus far, we have always come out victorious. Your comrades and colleagues adore you. They believe in you, in your strength. I doubt there is a single soul who is likened to you. Who are you, really? I simply do not understand. Whatever the case may be, having hair like mine is proof that there is something exceptional about you. I may as well come forward with things. I too am unlike others. Surely you recall when I was targeted, specifically for my blood? I may not be special in the ways you are, but my blood is rare. It seems the two of us share a special... differentness. I also believe that we are bound together in some way. Of this I am certain. Therefore, I intend to stay by your side and watch over you. Your existence must be preserved at all cost. Certainly those are the words of a hero. 
Let us unite our powers. Together, we are unstoppable! A most satisfactory result. All thanks to you. Thanking me? But you did everything. It's within my grasp. I suppose it's working. Mercedes, I have to insist that you take up a position behind me on the battlefield. I must protect the common folk, and you have been in danger rather frequently of late. I appreciate your concern, but I can take care of myself. Everything is about nobility and common folk with you, Lawrence. It's tiresome. Tiresome? I am only fulfilling my duty. Is that to say you would have left me lying on the floor in pain, had it not been your duty to assist? You mean when you were hurt on my account? I still would have assisted you, as any commoner would have. It is simply a matter of perspective. And if I were common-born, I would not have simply let you leave without... Never mind. Forgive me. Excuse me? Are you implying that you would have taken advantage of me if you were lowborn? What? No! And I am no longer interested in the hypothetical nature of this conversation. Oh, Lawrence, you'll never change. What do you mean? I find myself growing irritated just looking at you. Is that so? I fail to see exactly how I am so irritating. You claim that you don't want to be involved with common women, don't you? But I know deep in your heart you love being around us. You're willfully ignorant to that. I hope you know what you're depriving yourself of. I am certain I've told you before that my marriage must be beneficial to House Gloucester. I've not the time for fruitless courtship. Fruitless? Oh, how can you say such things? What would happen if you fell in love with a commoner? Nothing at all. I accept the role that I must play and any sacrifice that must accompany it. So, your duty as a noble is more important than your own feelings. Naturally. If that's true, then your whole existence is rather sad. I am afraid you misunderstand. This is my choice. There is no cause for pity. I think I've heard enough. I have to go.
that smell. Mm, it's amazing. My fave, in fact. Do you like it too? Oh, <laughs> I love this stuff. Did you know that? I did not expect much from the dining hall, but this does not disappoint. This is a wonderful dish. You could sell this in any restaurant in the capital. This is delicious! My absolute favorite! This is nearly as delicious as Mother's cooking! I would happily eat this every day! This food is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. This is my absolute favorite. How did you know, Professor? That looks delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. Oh, my favorite food. You've got to try this. this dish it was my father's favorite yeah you just get it professor this is my favorite Yummy! Who made this? I'll have to give my compliments to the chef. Delicious! After a scrumptious meal like that, I feel that I can really seize the day. Eating delicious food really takes my worries away. Eating food always fires me up. Hoorah! Let's go fight somebody!
We can't blaze ahead if we let the status quo confine us. Let's try coloring outside the lines, only with food. This combination of ingredients is creative, right? Now I just need to cut them to the proper sizes. Of course. stronger. Forgive me. Forgive me. What do you require? Farewell. Hello there. This one, yes? I think this one, yes? I think this one, yes? This one, yes? I think this one, yes? I think this one, yes? I thank you. Return soon, please. Really now? There's unrest. I hope this. Welcome. This one? Thank you. Please come again. Hello there. This one, yes? I thank you. This one, yes? I think this one, yes? I thank you. This one, yes? I think this one, yes? I thank you. This one, yes? I thank you. Return soon, please. Hey, welcome. You have a good eye. A you have a good eye. A pleasure doing business with you. 
You have a good eye. A, you have a good eye. A, you have a good eye. A pleasure doing business with you. You have a good eye. A, you have a good eye. A pleasure doing business with you. Come again. Hello, Professor. What brings you here? Fancy a bit of fishing? You know, I can hardly go fishing without thinking of old Gerald. He and I would just sit here, casting our lines again and again. I'm no better at it now than I was then. Not a single nibble. Ah, just like your father. You know all the tricks of the fisherman's trade. I was hopeless at it, but he was a master. In the time it took me to catch one fish, he could fill his basket to the brim. You know, talking to you, I'm feeling very nostalgic. Why don't you join me? We can trade some stories about the old man. We spoke before about how Gerald never seemed to age, right? Once, when he was drunk, he let the secret slip. He said he'd had an infusion of crest-bearing blood, and it had greatly extended his life. We'd both been drinking. I, I figured he was joking, so I just laughed it off. Then I asked him his age. He said he'd stopped counting after he hit 100. And he was telling the truth. In those 20 years he was away, he didn't age a bit. An incredible person, to be sure. And I probably don't know the half of it. Actually, I'd, I'd like to ask you something about Gerald, if you don't mind. When Gerald was away from the monastery, what was he like? <laughs> In other words, he was exactly the same. When I was his squire, he was always hollering for a drink. He just wouldn't put a cork in it. <laughs> but on the battlefield, he was unequaled. That's why people used to call him the Blade Breaker. <sighs> I have to say, right now, fishing with you, it really takes me back. This feels just like the good old days, when Gerald was sitting alongside me. Everyone, listen up. I have a proposal. We are now building our forces in order to rise up against the Imperial Army. But it wouldn't be smart for us to fight under the banner of the Alliance. That would only incite the lords who support the Empire. We've also combined forces with the Knights of Saros. Therefore, I suggest that we operate under a new symbol. That's why I've prepared this. You may recognize it as the Crest of Flames, which resides in Teach, the phantom crest that has reappeared after more than a thousand years. We're attempting our own miracle, so it seems like a suitable symbol for us. So. Until we welcome the dawn of a new age in Fodlan, let's fight to the very end as one under the symbol of the Crest of Flames. Impressive, Claude. Forget restoring the monastery. You've somehow roped everyone into fighting back against the Empire. If you recall, I never technically asked anyone to join us. If anything, we have Teach's achievements to thank. Now that you mention it, I guess I should express my gratitude. Hey, friend. So this is where you've been. Without you, the Knights never would have joined our cause. I can never pay you back for that. Just leave it to me, Teach. When this fight is over, I plan to see all of my dreams come to fruition. And yours as well. Well, for example, to bust open Fodlin's throat. There's a massive fortress there, which is responsible for protecting the eastern border of the Alliance. I like to think of it as a lid on a bottle. 
The people of Fodlan only know a small part of the world. Their prejudices are born because they don't know what lies beyond their borders. And the opposite is true too. Those outside of Fodlan don't know about this place. Ignorance breeds discrimination. Whether you look inside the bottle or outside of it, if you really look, all you'll find are people who you can get along with if you only try. That's why I want to bust open that lid, which is keeping us locked inside, or destroy the bottle entirely. I'll find the right time to bring it up. Even if I talked about it now, it doesn't seem realistic, does it? First, we need to defeat the Empire and restore peace to... Huh? Professor! Claude! We're under attack! I guess we'll have to cut our conversation short. What's going on, Leone? It's a small group, but some Imperial troops are headed this way. It looks like they were stationed nearby. I've got to hand it to Edelgard. Nothing gets past that woman. All right. I'll show you how much I've improved, Professor. This will be our first battle alongside the Knights of Serums. Let's kick off our new partnership with a magnificent victory. can work with this.
Hello, Raphael. Are you well? Any chance you might be training today? Of course! My muscles are always ready to train. I imagine so. Mind if I tag along? I have been practicing my battle cries. I believe you shall notice a marked improvement. Raw! Yeah! Wow! That sounds much better than last time. But, try doing it more like this. Oh, hearing it anew is positively invigorating. I have much training ahead if I am to become as strong as you. Try not to strain yourself. You've got smarts, so you shouldn't have to worry about your muscles. I won't be satisfied until my body is as strong as my mind. As my body is so frail, my brother is endlessly worrying over me. I know what that's like. I have a little sister, too. I always worry about her, even when it's something small, like catching a cold. Then surely you understand. I want to give my brother peace of mind. If I don't get stronger, I won't be able to do all the things I wish to do. But I'm quite enjoying this. I have never shouted so loudly in all my life. Each time I allow myself to let go in such a way, I feel invigorated. Well, if you're having fun, I'm not gonna stop you. Go on and shout as much as you want. Give it all you've got and make your brother proud. Just you wait. I've only just begun. All right. Gather up your energy deep in your gut and get ready to shout. Thanks for your help earlier. I do not desire your gratitude. I have a bone to pick with you. At the library, you pawned your job off on me. Actually, I never asked you to do the whole thing. You started teaching me how and got carried away. Meanwhile, I was just awestruck by your cleverness and generosity. Ah, well... <laughs> hey, wait a moment! Your charms won't work this time. You were just using me. Oh, that hurts my feelings. I really was awestruck. If I had to arrange all the library supplies on my own, I'd have been there past nightfall. With a steady pace, you would have finished by twilight at the latest. Oh no, I'm not competent enough, honestly. I don't even know how to make a cup of tea. You're quite a defeatist, Hilda. I... Oh, hold a moment, did you just say you cannot make tea? That's right. I can't touch things that get hot. I'm always scared of getting burned. Trust me, it is not difficult. You just need to be cautious as you are pouring. I can teach you. Really? Great! Please teach me, Ferdinand. This is a crucial skill for nobles, Hilda. If nothing else, you must learn the art of tea brewing. Look here. You bring the water to a boil, and you put the leaves in here. All right, that should be enough time steeping. Now we can drain the water, pour the tea, and enjoy. That took longer than I expected. Well, thanks. Bottoms up. You may have to steep it for more time or less, depending on the leaves. From now on, you can... Hmm, that really hit the spot. Thanks. I'm a slow learner, so I hope you'll teach me again sometime. She... she fooled me again! That was the last time! I swear it! Hey, Alois. Tell me another story about Captain Gerald, will you? I've told you so many. I don't have an endless supply, you know. There is one that comes to mind, however. That time the captain nearly killed me. What? What did you do? Now, it wasn't that I had done anything wrong. That wouldn't be much of a story, would it? No. We were at an inn making merry. Suddenly, 
the other guests began to gather around the captain. They wanted him to put on a show to entertain them with his skills. Oh, I get it. They figured his aim would be great even while drunk. <laughs> That's right. He had a hatchet, and they asked him to hit targets with it. A hatchet, huh? I guess a dagger would be too easy. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> then the captain tells me, put this apple on your head and stand over there. Ah, so he could knock it right off, huh? <laughs> that was the idea, but the hatchet fell short of my head, nearly striking me square in the chest. If I hadn't gotten out of the way, that inn would have been my grave. <laughs> I knew it. That's our captain. So clumsy sometimes. <laughs> True. Injuries take their toll on a man's dexterity. Oh, so that's why? I just remember him saying his hands were no good for finesse. Well, regardless, a master swordsman, that Captain Gerald. Even with the hatchet, now that I think of it. I never saw him miss in the training yard. Really? Seems unlike him to miss that apple, then. Yes, that just dawned on me. Throwing that hatchet, he shouldn't have missed so badly. But Do you think maybe he was secretly angry with you? I'm not sure. What if the captain was, in fact, trying to kill me? Ha! <laughs> no way. He must have known you would dodge the throw in time. Horsing around at the inn, deadly serious on the battlefield. Sounds just like him, doesn't it? Yes. Certainly an eccentric man. Sometimes, Leone. You quite remind me of him. Though plans to resist the Empire are still being devised by the Alliance Army, the Imperial Army has already anticipated their next move. An Imperial vanguard just outside Garrig Mach, led by General Randolph, begins to advance with the aim of toppling the monastery once again.
Knights of Seros are a powerful enemy, but we have more soldiers. We'll take them down all at once. So, the enemy intends to use their overwhelming numbers to defeat us. Let's fight fire with... actual fire. Report. The enemy has entered the periphery of Garrig Mok. If they reach the interior, the enemy will take the monastery. Drive them back immediately. Let's make this quick. You lost that one. Let's go. Enemies are my enemies. I've gotten stronger, haven't I? What's my strategy? Guide me well. Sorry about that. I'll do my best. Make a difference. Shall we? Did the trick. Steady now. At the ready. Sorry. Leave it to me. Thanks for that. from my sleeve. Strange battle flag is... But isn't our enemy the Church of Saros? 
They didn't have enough soldiers with just the church, so they upped their numbers by joining with those filthy rogues. It doesn't matter what flag they fly. They're nothing more than a mob. We'll destroy them all! friends. Allied soldiers are making preparations for the plan. Protect them! She's catching up to me. I wasn't about to let you go. I found strength in adversity. Another skill only for battle.
I've gotten stronger. No time to slow down. Fire to be my best. Fitting outcome. The weak fall, the strong live. I fought and won. People are waiting on me. Amazing.
Gotta help. Behold our strategy. I can exceed this. Won't be in vain. Don't get used to this. Not quite what I'd hoped for. Sorry, it's got to be like this. Forgive me. I won't let this hold me back. I'll try to put this to use.
I will not die yet. No time to slow down. Now there's a way forward. on perseverance is the key Must leave them well. You're incredible. Yeah. 
Now there's a way forward. That helps. forward to lose. Gotta train harder. I'll grow as strong as I can.
a hindrance. I won't allow it. I knew you could do it. Just return home like this. Teach, look out! They're after your head! for the fire attack. Now we just need to draw the enemy's attention. You can't defeat us with that many soldiers? The Imperial Army is doomed without a capable general. Quiet! Don't think you'll get away with mocking me! Attack! Make sure they never speak again! Now! Fire attack! The damage is too great! We can't fight anymore! All units retreat! I'll take on our pursuers! Carry away the injured soldiers! If we let them escape, they'll come back to attack later. We have to take them out.
No strength left. Do not try to resist. Destiny unfurls. Ah, you did it. Sorry. Those Imperial troops are really something. Looks like we'll face a lot of resistance in the future. Phew, nice work. We won without much incident, thanks to all of you. Now the enemy knows we're on the move. What do you plan to do? I intend to ask the Alliance Lords to share some troops with us to bolster our forces. I will speak plainly. No matter whom we beseech for reinforcements, our envoys will inevitably pass through Gloucester territory. My father is being cautious not to give the Empire a pretext to intervene. Therefore, he is unlikely to allow even envoys to pass through. I guess I haven't told you yet, Teach. The Kingdom isn't in a position to be sending anyone reinforcements. After losing King Lambert during the tragedy of Dusker, a Regent had been handling its politics. But then, there was a bloody coup. The Regent and Prince Dimitri both... Apparently the whole family was killed. All bladed territory, including the Kingdom capital, is being ruled by those who are cooperating with the Empire. The Kingdom is no more. It's now called the Fargus Dukedom. The vast majority of the former Kingdom Lords bent a knee to the overwhelming power of the Empire and the Dukedom, and now fall under their jurisdiction. Some who formerly held power are continuing to resist, but it would be difficult for them to regain it. Oh hey, I can think of one person who we can ask for reinforcements. Someone whose territory is really close, and who's on good terms with Claude. Ah, the hero of Daphne, I presume. I've seen her before, and she does seem to be reliable. You're talking about Judith, right? I bet she would lend us a hand. That's right, you've met her once before, Teach. She's a fearsome one-woman army. She did a lot for me, even before I was recognized as the heir to House Regan. I don't like the idea of owing her more than I already do, but given the current situation, sacrifices must be made. I'll reach out to her. As for the rest of you, prepare for our next battle. Hey, you Teach. How are you feeling? Does anything feel... Um, strange at all? Well, you were asleep for five whole years, after all. It'll probably take time to get you back to top form. Though, I'm relieved to see you haven't lost a step as far as combat goes. Your command bringing my schemes to life. That's just how we fight best. Not yet, but there's no need to worry. That woman adores me. Once we've bolstered our forces, it'll finally be time to start taking decisive action. But I wonder, do you really think Rhea is still alive? I think so too. It's hard to imagine the death of someone as important as her staying a secret. I wonder where she is and what she's doing. That's a dangerous question, Teach. To be honest, 
I've given it a lot of thought. All I know is that I still have a lot of questions I need to ask her. About the true history of crest stones and heroes' relics, and the truth behind the legend of Seros and Nemesis. She has secrets. Too many of them for my comfort. Considering the state of the world, it's suspicious. You must be curious about what was done to you and what her plans were for you, right? And you never did learn about your mother, did you? None of our doubts will ever be cleared unless we hear these answers from Rhea herself. In that sense, I absolutely hope Rhea is still alive. But as far as Fodlan goes, I do wonder what a world without Rhea would look like. The majority of people in Fodlan believe in the Saros faith that Rhea preaches. That's why they accept the noble system as if it were the only option, and refuse to associate with those who believe in anything else. That closed-minded philosophy is the reason why Fodlan's throat is locked tight. But if you remove the archbishop who strictly advocates that doctrine, that worldview is no longer an absolute. There's room for free thought. The leadership of the church would undoubtedly fall to you, and you would hold the power to change the shape of the faith, of the world. Then, for the first time, people would truly be free to think for themselves, to decide what's right and what's wrong. Honestly, I believe Edelgard is probably hoping to achieve something very similar. But her methods require too much bloodshed. That's not something the world can get behind. Anyway, the best thing we can do is find Rhea and hear what she has to say. <laughs> Oops, uh, I guess I've been going on for a while now. Sorry about that. You should get some rest. <laughs>